We are back. That's right. Raider Cup Podcast is back. This is episode 312. And I am your host, Al Martinez, also known as Alpha Mike. Today's episode is called Instant Communication. We're going to look exactly what instant communication is, the actual purpose used in law enforcement. If you're in the Tampa Bay area and you're looking for good gun training, well, we've got the answer. It's Raider Cop TAC, T-A-C, Raider Cop TAC, T-A-C dot com. And there you can get some pretty good training on revolver, pistol, carbine, shotgun, whatever your needs are. You can go to our website with more information. And that is RaiderCopTac, T-A-C, dot com. You can also go to our podcast website, which is RaiderCop.com, RaiderCop.com. There you can see all our episodes from number one to 312. So we've done a lot of podcasts, 312. That's a lot of talking. If you want to reach out to us, you can. Our telephone number is 813-942-7400. That's 813-942-7400. And our email, if you want to email us, is RaiderCopPodcast, all one word, at Proton, P-R-O-T-O-N, dot me, M-E. So we look forward to your information. You know, I'm going to go through the list of shows that we're going to do today. And I'm also going to talk about where where in the world have we been for four weeks and some of the things that we're going to be doing in the future. But the news, there's plenty of it. And you know that in our intro, we always talk about the news. But today we're going to emphasize this podcast on what you're probably already tired of hearing, and that is the Trump shooting slash assassination attempt. This podcast is specifically about instant communication and what we know as of right now. So it's a little feedback, and you're going to really like uh, the po- episodes that we got coming up for the remainder remainder of the year. I think we go all the way to October, but but the next podcast, so I'm going to line them all along towards the end of the year. So be on the lookout for that. So let's look at our intro information here, and... I want to start off with Facebook or fake book. Lately, they have placed me on timeout. And as a result, I didn't like it. You see, the violations, first they say it's a technical error that never gets fixed. If you go to load something, it says error. And then they also say, uh, you know, click here to learn more. And fastly, you learn that you're wasting a good portion of your day in foolishness because fake book has no intentions of allowing me back on, at least during that time period. So then they say that I violated some standards and they show me like a list of violations with dates on them. Some of them you can click on because there was some still there. Some were gone. The original publisher must have taken them down. There will remain a mystery what I've done wrong. You know, I'm tired of fake book. Every time it's election year, it's time to censor people. And it shouldn't be like this. I mean, how many times are we going to bring... Zuckerberg in front of Congress 
where he's going to deny, we're not doing that. No, no, we don't do that. No, absolutely not. But it's happening. I'm tired of Facebook. We are on Truth Social. We are on X. We're on Getter. That's about it. You know, there's, we're running out of options. We're on Rumble. You can look us up at Raider Cop or Raider Cop Podcast and you'll find us. We're still on Facebook or fake, fake, fake book, whatever you prefer to call it, and on Instagram. But I'm um, not a happy camper nowadays because every election, presidential election cycle, apparently the fact checkers from communists, wherever they are, are plentiful. And nobody sees a problem with it. Of course, I know and you know there will be congressional hearings in the future that resolve absolutely nothing. And we get to look at this crap all over again in 2028. So that's enough of fake book. Elections. Elections are coming up November 5th. Some, I don't know, I'm not going to sit here and try to figure out how long, but 90-something days, 90 days out, 88, whatever the hell it is. We have to be ready. <clears throat> Early voting, we have to be ready. Do not, in my opinion, wait to November 5th and get on the longest line ever because it might rain, there there might be issues. Um, no, 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 no. If in your state there's early voting, get your ass in gear, bring your identification, and vote. The earlier, the better. You know what? I, you know why? This is my opinion on it. When I was a kid, elections were called at 7 p.m. That was the end of the election and we were closing the polls and then you would hear the media station ramble on for about an hour and a half. So, and then they would say, projection is, projection is. And by 11 o'clock, it was over. Everybody knew who the winner was and you either went home laughing, smiling, or crying. But today... It's an election result week. Why is that? Voting at the last second, I believe there's a lot more fraud. As they come in, they're calculated. That is electronic calculations. Kind of harder to fool around with it. But at that last second, boy, hmm, it's scary. So that's my two cents on the election, November 5th. Vote as soon as the state that you are in opens up the polls. Vote, vote early, bring your ID, and be proud of the candidate that you're voting for. That's right. If you're for fake Camilla, then that's good. I'm happy for you. Be prepared to stand by her if for some strange, unknown reason, she would end up with 100 million votes. This is the same person that was polling at less than 3% during the 2020 election when she ran for president and had a dive out. And now she's 48, 49 in the polls, pulling ahead of Donald Trump, just like that. The darling of the media, she went from clown to princess, all in the blink of a Barack Obama blink of an eye. It's amazing. So if you can't see the communist playbook here, then you're blind. They're putting bad actors and making them superheroes. And we are supposed 
to believe. The VP pick that she's picked is just as bad. Besides everybody's normal reaction when he first came in, who is this guy? Then we started learning that there's stolen valor. He was never the coach of a football team. And I'm sure we'll learn a lot more. We know he's a nutty leftist, just like Camilla is too. The commies are trying to take over. Yes, yes, just like the era of Che Guevara. All they need now is their green little barrettes and start forming facial hair. Could be uh, pretty interesting. All right, <clears throat> let's take a second, see if I can do this, and we're going to look at the shows that are coming uh, at you up until 20, uh, no, October. Up, up to October. I was going to get crazy and start saying 2027 or something like that. Don't panic. Okay. So you got this one. Instant Communication is episode 312. Then uh, coming up next, we haven't, re- I haven't named it yet, but it probably will be Traveling with Money, episode 313. Do not miss that one. It will detail, we will talk about how federal agencies, and specifically in this one, the DEA, you know, I was worried because we had ATF, clowns, FBI, clowns, CIA, clowns, Homeland Security, clowns. I go, where's the DEA? But we're going to talk about them in episode 313, how... How can I say this nicely? They're picking people's pockets at the airport and taking their money and letting them go and keeping the money. Most other places, this is called robbery or theft. If they constitute fear, it would be robbery. But if they don't constitute, then it could be just plain theft. A lot of people are horrified by what is occurring. So it may may classify as robbery. So don't miss that. Then we're going to have uh, going forward, and that is specifically an episode dealing with the Secret Service, you know, what they need to do. And you say, well, who the hell am I? Well, I do a lot of research. That's why I didn't come out babbling when the incident occurred. And I want you to ask yourself this one question. A so-called 20-year-old kid jumped up on a roof, was 148 yards away from President Trump, 45, and took several, about eight shots at him. Correct? So far, so far, so good. He got up there with a ladder, and he completely fooled the Secret Service and the local police in having any ability to get up to that little roof that he got up on. They continuously show us his photograph from sixth grade on the news and tell us how he single-handedly did this all by himself. Okay, well, maybe it's true. I don't know. Investigation is still pending. But ask yourself this one question, and then we'll move on with the rest of the episodes. How about a highly trained terrorist attack team that came through the border, let's say eight to ten shooters, against the Secret Service? Hmm? Did you forget Secret Service Barbie already? I didn't. So, going forward, episode 314, after that we're going to have No Report, and that is episode 315, and No Report is an alarming alert. Apparently, a lot of states in the United States have stopped no mas reporting 
crime statistics to the FBI. They're not mandated to do so, and they're not. Or they're very, very, very slowly rolling them out. You see, if the FBI doesn't have crime statistics, there's no crime. Get it? So, it's becoming an epidemic. And surprisingly, you may not believe this, especially in those red states. Oh, wow. Did you really believe it was the red states? I got you. I got you. I'm starting to wonder about you. The blue ones, my friend, the blue ones. All right, heading into uh, September, we're going to check, uh, checking out for good. And that's episode 316. And um, keep that a little bit of a mystery of what we're going to talk about there. September 11th, we are going to be talking about September 11th. And specifically what we're going to talk about on that episode, which is episode 317, specifically we're going to talk about on 9-11 is the events that occurred on 9-11, what we know today with all the three-letter alphabet agencies that serve us, we're going to transport ourselves like the twilight zone. Remember how that used to go? Imagine if you will. And we're going to say, did it really happen that way? I don't know. We'll take a look at it. And then uh, episode 318 in September is going to be Bull Armory. Great manufacturing, uh, gun manufacturer out of Miami. They import uh, 1911 style weapons and pistols. And they have, uh, I believe, some ARs too. And they are from Israel. You're not allowed to say that. This is off all the Palestinians. But anyway, it's a great weapon, if you're on the high end of these weapons, we're going to talk about bull armory. Lastly, for the month of September, we're going to have episode 319. We're going to talk about the new crisis intervention. Police departments all around America have really moved forward with the Demi agenda on police reforms, and a lot of stupid people in government are starting to believe it. So the new crisis intervention will introduce social workers to police. I'm not going to say it's not going to work. I'm going to say we're going to hold off. Okay. October, we will have uh, with Eminem a show on calorie deficiencies. If you want to lose weight, you know a lot of people want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. Everybody has battle with weight. That's part of our wellness program. And about a year and a half ago, I lost 65 pounds in doing what we're going to talk about on calorie deficiency. And that is episode 320. And then that show will be follow up with uh, episode 321 which is first shots with Eminem on the 9 millimeter carbine. So we did our first experience with a pistol. And this episode, we're going to talk about the difference between how she felt as a new shooter with the pistol and the 9 millimeter carbine. And uh, that'll be fun as well. And, the la- and then after that show will be... 322, shoot and don't shoot. And shoot and don't shoot is we're going to break down the psyche of engaging in a gun battle. And of course, it's going to be hypothetical. But you see, if you're a law enforcement like I was and you retired, you spent a considerable amount of years training to remove the weapon out of your holster and engage the threat. For a civilian, 
that has been horrified by the Democratic Party and what they see on TV. And they ran out and purchased a gun. Now they're carrying it around. <clears throat> Many states in the United States now have constitutional carry or permitless carry that you don't need a permit if you're an American citizen. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I must have assaulted the aliens, the illegal ones. And um, we're going to break into the psyche on how once that gun gets out of the holster, there's no return. So that's probably good. that's going to be episode 322. And we're compiling some more. We're going to do one or two more interviews with, uh, remember, I'm not going to do those all the time, but uh, I love the platform. I love um, some of the guys that we've had on already. They, they were phenomenal. And we have many more coming up as well. We're probably going to do a little interview in October. And that might be 320, what is it, 22 I left off, 323. And it's probably going to be with Kilo Sierra that's coming down from New Jersey. And he will be at um, a conference, shooting conference. And I'm going to drive down there and meet him for the day. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to partake in the conference because I, de- I could not get, I think it's four days. I'm not sure what I couldn't get the four days. But I want to go down there for at least one day and uh, spend some time with Kilo Sierra. And we'll, we'll put together a little podcast about what we're doing down there and what he's been up to as well. So look forward to that. And um, some other interesting, important, and interesting guests that we're going to come up with. In 2025, I will probably incorporate it one interview a month. So if you know that there's 12 months in the year, that would be 12 interviews. Very good. Very good. All right, so let's get back to the original reason we're here, and that is instant con- communication is the name of the episode. Episode number is number 312, and we are going to turn our books to the book of Proverbs, and we're going to turn to chapter 3, verse 3. Give me a second while I navigate to my scripture, which is electronic. Do people have Bibles anymore? You know, the book, the answer. I mean, I've got them. I've got them stacked up all over the place. But nowadays, everybody does the phone and, you know, all the uh, gadget, gadgetry stuff, which is good. Not, um, not a hater. Not a hater. If that's what they want to use, they can use. I also believe that actually flipping through the pages is very good because you know which way to go. When you ever see somebody looking through the pages, in the, let's say you go to a church and the pastor says, uh, go to the book of uh, Corinthians. And they start in the beginning of the book. Uh, you know that. Yeah. Okay. So... We were going to what, the Proverbs before I started rambling and got lost. All right, give me a second. Here we go. Proverbs 3 3. 3. And, da, da, da. and number 3, starting at 3 to number 6, it says Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 through 6. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on a tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. 
A lot of people have criticized 45, Donald Trump, because he said that the Almighty's hand was present in saving his life in the shooting slash assassination attempt. And I also believe that as well. Does that make him special? I don't know. But I do know that God and his angels were present. 148 yards away. And a 20-year-old kid with a sixth-grade photograph that represents him today almost took out. 45. But thank God he missed. Even though he hit him, but it wasn't critical. It wasn't serious. And soon he'll be 47. So, scripture, why is it important? People keep on asking me, how did I come up with this scripture thing in the middle of these podcasts? In all things, what did I just read? In all things, don't lean on your own understanding. So you need guidance, and guidance comes through the Lord. He counts our steps. All right, we are going to look at instant communication. We're going to start the clowns, you know, the short bus. So if you hear this on audio on Apple, Spotify, iHeart, wherever you get your podcast, you put Raider Cop Podcast and we pop out. And you will see episode 312. So when you hear about the short bus, I play a little music in the background and I start the main event. And that's what we're going to do now. So without any further interruption, episode 312, instant communication, the main event is about to start. All right, here we go. The main event, episode 312. Instant Communication, I am your host, Al Martinez, also known as Alpha Mike. We are going to talk about instant communication. If you're watching the video portion of it, I've got a little radio. No longer in law enforcement, I retired seven and a half to eight years ago, something like that. And uh, so I don't carry these things anymore, but I used to. And I must have brought these little gadgets here for like $79 or something like that. There's two of them. The other one's somewhere in the back. And um, Eminem can contact me probably about uh, six or seven miles away from here. Hi, I need you to do the following honey-do list. And then I'll know what to do. So, instant communication. It's a little gadget. Just turn it on. Channel you're on. It beeps. Does all that good stuff. And it was in a beep. There you go. And you can just click on the thing on the side here. It's the mic button. Right there, right, right up here, mic button. Click on the mic button and talk. The only faster communication is if the person was standing next to you, you'd turn around and say, hey, and they would hear you. Here you have same same principle, but you have to hit the button. So I hit the button. Once you hit the button, then you can say, hey. And they can hear you. So it's like a half a second slower. But apparently the Secret Service didn't have instant communication the day of the shooting for Donald Trump 45, better known as the attempted assassination. I have a funny feeling that this is going to go down with landmark other cases that we know nothing about, like the Kennedy assassination, 
the World Trade Center's events, 9-11, and UFOs. We're not allowed to know anything that really is occurring. And I think this is going to be one of those monumental cases, too. The magic bullet, the sixth grade photo, and a 20-year-old fooled everybody. Secret Service, FBI, all the, all the alphabet agencies fooled by a 20-year-old person. I have to call him a person because we don't even know that. Does it have one? It doesn't have one. I don't know. So looking at instant communication and the importance of it, we have to take into consideration that on that day, there was a break in communication. Now, you probably know as much as I know, if you watch the news every once in a while, they will repeat the same thing over and over and over and over for days on end. And they told us that all the witnesses were pointing up at the roof and all the civilian witnesses could see the shooter. Look, he's right there. But the cops had difficulties finding him. Somehow he had magical dust on himself and cops were blinded by this magical dust and couldn't see him. He had placed on a range finder and he looked down range at the intended target, which would be the stage where 45 would stand. And he was seen by civilians. Hey, who's this guy? They pointed out to police. Hey, who's that guy? Even it's rumored that one of the police officers themselves said, that's funny. We need to look at who this guy is. But this 20-year-old baffled everybody. He put some more magical disappearing dust on himself. Gone. Couldn't find him. Somehow snuck through the crowd with a ladder and got up on that roof. And minutes before 45 was to take the stage, a couple of people looked and said, who's that guy on the roof? What's he doing? And the shit was about to become real. Instant communication. We also know that the Secret Service was supposed to give a briefing to the SWAT team, the local, you know, the locals. You know, every, have you, did you see the interviews with the Secret Service directors and all these tight wads? And uh, <clears throat> they come out, how they refer to the police department that assisted them in carrying out that detail. They won't even call them by name. They call them the locals. It sounds funny. The locals. Apparently the locals stood around waiting for the Secret Service to give them a briefing on to the secret to the SWAT team about what they're gonna protect and not protect. And that that's what team came out on ABC News and told the reporter they never showed up. They never showed up. But um, then again, there's nothing for you to see here. Continue moving. Instant communication. Now, we also know, and I'm only going based on what we've been told by our media, they also told us that the Secret Service originally did not want to take that tactical position up on top of the roof because it was slanted and dangerous to the agents. But moments after the shooting, that the sniper took out the 20-year-old with the sixth grade photograph, blew his brains out, 
neutralized the shooter. There's body-worn footage from the locals as they got up on the roof. And a guy in a suit with dress shoes. And he had a badge on his belt. And it said Secret Service. Somehow he got up there. This man should have received an award for bravery. Because he did what no other Secret Service agent could do. He got up on that roof. But the Secret Service is no longer handling that case. They're doing their own cockamamie investigation that's going absolutely nowhere. To find out what they did wrong, I think they should change that and change that investigation to what did they do right. That might take a little longer because it's hard to see and hard to find. And the FBI, maybe days after the crime scene, they went up to the roof. They saw enough of what they needed to see up there. You know, they blew the guy's brains out. A sixth grade photo and 20-year-old. And then they grabbed the garden hose, and they washed it all down. Yeah. Yeah. wonder if we could see, I don't know, maybe autopsy photos. No? So anyway, the instant communication is the rule of thumb and the first thing that law enforcement needs to give excellent service to its citizens. Imagine, if you will, that you ran to the phone, called 911, and then they said, we'll send somebody right over. As soon as they come back to the station, we'll tell them to go out there. Do you think calls are slow now? Imagine that system. No, no. The locals got this radio. And that radio has helped these locals in policing for a long time. Probably sometime in the 70s it started. Early versions, maybe in the 60s or the 50s when they had the funny phone calls that they would have, like, you know, the phone stations, like pull stations. You could pull, if you, if you lived in New York, you know what I'm talking about. Pull station, you could pull the fire department, and there was another one you could pull for the police department. But back in the 60s, the cops had, like, phones they could call, dispatch. I don't know who they were talking to. The sergeant on the desk. They were saying, we need some help out here. And they'd hang up the phone, and somebody would show up, you know, whenever. So you cannot defend the president of the United States or the nominee, the nominee for president of the United States without instant communication. Everything that we've seen and that we know so far, the Secret Service has failed the American citizen. 45 almost died. For many, many centuries, they were going to say, you know, it was a conspiracy. And there would be people who say, no, no, it's just a 20-year-old kid got up on the roof. That's all. That's all it was. And that argument will go for a long time. It will have to take a back step to the World Trade Center, 9-11. You're probably saying, it's the World Trade Center, 9-11, it's the same thing. No, no. It's not the same thing. It was the original World Trade Center when... They tried to blow that up. That was in 93. So he forgot already. Like most Americans, they don't remember any of this nonsense. And in uh, 2001, right, September 11th, World War One, they uh, threw planes, right, flew, flew those planes right through the building. Right. So there's two events. In the Kennedy assassination, we might even throw in Lincoln. I'm not sure. Let's try to Give that a little debate. 
<clears throat> and this one's going to be on there too. It's going to be way back there in the back burner. And they're compiling evidence. We saw people that make six figures representing us in the federal government stand in front of Congress and say, I don't know. I just don't know. And as you know, Senator, Congressman, there's an ongoing investigation, so I can't talk about it. So why the hell did I even come to this? And this is the norm now. This isn't the exception. This is what they do. The Patsy was taken down, which was the director of, uh, what's it, the, the Cheetos, the chips. Cheeto chips got taken down. She's out. She's the Patsy. And I said, nobody wants to talk about this no more. Talk about something else. And it can't be. Instant communication. If you thought that I was going to sit here and tell you about the invention of the radio, that's not going to happen. Everybody, even my little grandchildren, know that on this little radio, you hit the little button on the side, and their sibling comes out, you know, down the down the hallway or the, on the on um, the first floor, they can hear. It's called instant communication. Even the little ones know. But the Secret Service does not. As citizens, we cannot continue to sit there and say, this is normal behavior. We have to accept it. We need to have a full investigation. It should be bipartisan, but that's never going to happen either. And we have to correct the wrongs. So the most important thing, remember the storyline. A 20-year-old kid with a sixth-grade photograph that the media keeps on showing us baffled the Secret Service and almost took out the, the nominee, the, the former president and the nominee for the Republican Party. Hmm? If you believe that one, folks, you know how the story goes. So, an instant communication for law enforcement, we know they cannot carry out their duties without these things, the radios. It's not going to work. Why then would the Secret Service that day believe that they could do what they were has to do without the radios. There's supposed to be a command post that has communication. But somehow, maybe they did have it, but they weren't connected to the locals. I want to be with the locals. I don't want to talk to the locals. So, how long will this investigation take? As long as they can delay it. What will we find out after this investigation? Probably nothing. And how much will this investigation cost? A whole lot of money. But it isn't going anywhere. And that's a shame because as citizens of this great country, we should demand better. Regardless of your party affiliation, we should demand better. I'm not blaming anybody in the government that did this on purpose. I'm not saying any of that. It's a 20-year-old kid with a sixth-grade photograph that the media shows us. He did it. So that means that our federal agencies have to do better or get out of the way. You know how the saying goes, shit or get off the pot. If you are looking for a gunsmith, I know one, his name is Pistol Pete the Gunsmith. He's down in Miami, Florida. Pistol Pete the Gunsmith. You can look him up. Just hit that Google and put Pistol Pete the Gunsmith and he'll pop up. He will instruct you, if you give him a real fast call, 
on how to send your gun to him. Perfectly legal. He gets it. Does the specifications that you demand. Puts it back in a box and sends it right back to you. Pistol Pete, the gunsmith, was my gunsmith when I was in law enforcement. and My life was in his hands. Also, I told you, Kilo Sierra will be in Palm Beach in October. I'm going to go down there and see them because I'm up in Tampa Bay in Palm Beach itself, not north. And when he, I see him, <clears throat> excuse me, when I see him down there, we're going to probably try to pull off a little bit of a podcast. You know, it might not be very long, but we'll try some, doing something. Supervillia Inc. And his information is down on the bottom of the show notes. If you're in the New Jersey area, you must be excited that your state, the state of New Jersey, is allowing permit carrying concealment. And Kilo Sierra teaches that course, and he teaches it very well. An experienced instructor, firearms instructor of more than 20 years, he definitely knows what he's doing. If you're down in South Florida, AAA, AAA, gun safety, with my good friend Amalo, you can give him a call. And, of course, Tampa Bay, looking for gun training up here in the Tampa Bay area. That would be us, and that's RaiderCopTAC.com. So up next, I went through the um, the list. It's probably going to be uh, traveling with money. I haven't come up with that title yet because I've been bouncing it around. But there'll be something there of. You're going to be shocked to hear what uh, one of the new kids on the block in the three-letter alphabet organizations that F our lives up is um, robbing Americans. I don't know how else I could say it. So that concludes episode 312, Instant Communication. We looked at what? These little radios, right? Some of them in law enforcement are much more elaborate. They cost thousands of dollars. They have big antenna satellites, repeaters, and all that for law enforcement to communicate instantaneously with each other to give you a quality law enforcement response. But apparently our Secret Service recently didn't think they needed instant communication. We know that because there was a breakdown and the locals pointing out to the Secret Service, there was a guy on the roof that was armed. You can't make it up, folks. As always, continue to pray for yourself because without you, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, the law enforcement agencies that serve you, and most important, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike. I'll see you downrange.